Again, welcome. My name is Joseph Vasquez uh, with Art Storefronts. I'm the head of the outreach team here. Oh man, I, I've been here for ever, I guess, uh, which is great. I've uh, talked to, I mean, six years or so at this point, but so I've talked to thousands of artists, uh, photographers at all different stages, uh, whether you uh, have been at it and doing shows and things offline and, and selling well um, online already, or maybe new to photography or painting, you know, maybe you that paintbrush across the room during COVID called out to you and, and you reached for it and have been putting some amazing stuff together, kind of curious to see what you can do with it. Um, so yeah, no, I'm happy to chat. I want to hear, oh, I saw, saw a painting already. I love it. Um, we'll talk about your art, answer any questions you guys have. Uh, I'd love to just hear where you're at, like uh, what, what problems are stumping you um, as you're trying to market your art or get it out there, things like that, and give you any tidbits and guidance I can. Um, the only other thing I wanted to cover really quick before we we get into that, I know uh, we already had Pat's presentation, so this I'll be brief on, and we can always talk further on it, but just what to focus on right now, right? Um, big question, and it's there's an important answer right now, because uh, we're right on the cusp. Like, this month is generally just one of the busiest months for us, because we have so many artists and photographers reaching out, um, and for good reason, right? They want to talk. Um, because in here, let me kind of show you my screen here. The fourth quarter is on our doorstep. So here, let me make sure this is as big as possible for you. But uh, yeah, uh, kind of put this together just to give you guys some visuals. The fourth quarter, which is like all of the holiday season. So that's why we call it the fourth quarter. You know, you have your Christmas, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of these peak selling times are on the horizon here. So a lot of people are reaching out to prep for that and be ready. So you'll notice here, just Black Friday, always a new record every year, it gets bigger and bigger, right? Right here, Cyber Week. So, you know, we say Black Friday, it's easy. We all know what that is. You imagine people rushing over each other and, and, and buying stuff, but it's really part of a bigger theme um, that time of the year that's coming with, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday. There's a lot of activity happening there. Um, and just kind of gives you right here. So through Cyber Monday sales or peaking on Amazon, it's just online is up as a in general. And then again, 7.4 billion in online sales. And then another key part to that is mobile orders, right? So you want to make sure you're set up for that. Um, so we have a lot of people reaching out or just planning, and we can talk about it here, what to do to get ready. Um, because if you're not set up to be able to take these orders at this point in time, if you're not, you know, mobile optimized, those types of things, you're missing sales. You know, you're the people who want to buy your art, you want to make it as easy as possible, um, especially during these peak times. Because the thing about cyber, you know, week and Black Friday, if you guys notice, think back to like your email a year ago, you start to see like those things creep up. It's no longer like that Thursday and Friday. A few years back, it started to be like the beginning of the week. A lot of the retail started doing it. Then it went the week before and before. And so now you notice those sales and, and that money being taken out of the market for people buying things is happening earlier and earlier. So what we've done is, you know, our, our marketing team, they're fantastic. They stay on top of these things and they start to optimize like where you guys should be at and when those sales should start happening. Because if you're starting on Black Friday, you missed a lot, right? And I'll show you that here in a graph here. So um, another kind of key point to, to point out here, here's some of the uh, just some of our members uh, that do well, uh, you might notice Matthew um, from the other presentation, you notice the difference here in their Q4, right? These are some of our, our top artists. If you take away the fourth quarter, which is that October, November, December months, they're not really our best sellers anymore, right? This is a huge part of their art. So whether you're already selling or you're looking to see what you can do with your art, it's a great time to get a lot of exposure and see what you can do, because this is traditionally going to be your, your, your sweet spot. It's your Super Bowl, uh, I like to say, 
uh, for selling your art and getting exposure. So you just don't want to miss it. And that's why right now, a lot of people coming on board because you've got to set up a site and it takes time. So the windows just starts to shrink. And again, you don't want to start in October because you want to get those sales, as I'll show you here. Um, here's another really interesting too, right? Again, 53.7, so almost 54% of people get all their revenue right there in those months. We're also in the third quarter, midway through there. You don't want to neglect this 20% either. So again, there's still about 70% of sales still on the table out there for you guys to capture those sales and take up that wall space, so to speak. Um, but this, this slice is shrinking by the day. And so, you know, you get up, you get going, you get active in here, see if you can get, grab that, but you want to be ready for this guy. And so that's, that's really the important theme now, prepping yourself, making sure you have a great foundation so you're able to be really successful in these times. And then just another graph here, just kind of like you see, you know, there's peaks throughout the year of the little selling times, but really a crescendo here at the end of the year that we're building into. And again, you want to be part of the upward swing because even the lows here and this peak are higher than other parts of the year. So there's just a lot of exposure online. There's a lot of selling going on. And we just want you guys to grab as much wall space with that with your art as well. So just wanted to point that out and kind of show you guys what's on the horizon for selling your art. And uh, yeah, other than that, let's, happy to answer questions on that. Happy to answer questions about you or yeah, wherever you're at. So feel free to drop it in the chat, like I said, or uh, there's a little button uh, to raise your hand and say, you got a question. We'll just go around the room and uh, do some chatting. But how are you guys doing? Anybody got any questions? Maybe, no, if not, I'll start picking on people. I'll do it. Oh, Linda's got a question. Let's see, Let's if we can unmute Linda. Wait, do I have the ability? Let me see if I have the power. Here, Linda, I'm hitting, uh, the, I'm asking you to unmute. If you can unmute, we'll get to talking. Hello? There it Hi. is. How are you? Good. I've been taking these classes once a month. I mean, um, uh, what's it called? It's called the Art Shattered Circle. It's wonderful, this woman. And she's been teaching us all these really cool things, see, with art, glass, and resin. And that's an abstract. And then also how to, like, you know, cut and make flowers and really cool things. I mean, all those flowers and, and see the flower pot and stuff on the canvas. So uh -huh. really cool stuff. And then um, in a lot of abstracts and, and a bunch of stuff. So I'm trying to figure out how to sell it. It's so different. And mm -hmm. um, so I've done like a craft fair before and, you know, but I, I don't know what to do to, you know, how to set up a website, you know, see people saying Etsy, some people saying Facebook, some people saying this, and it's like, I don't know where to start. Okay. You know what I mean? And I used to be a massage therapist, used to Raytheon, worked at Raytheon, and now I have rods in my back, my neck, and my knee, and I just, and this is really soothing, relaxing to me, and everybody says it's so beautiful, and they want to buy the pieces, but I need to get out there, you know, so I, as I saw you guys, I'm like, oh, well, what do you do, and I, I, it's something that we join with you guys, and you help us with this, with the website, and, you know, I'd be willing to do some, like, you know, online live things too to show the work you know but i, I just don't know where to go okay a little bit of a, of a runway and some pointers so um a couple things you should do um i guess just a lot to unpack there one i do want to say if you if you can where you used to work if, if they'd let you put some up there and put, put it for sale if you got some ends there that's always nice to start get more people seeing your work um yeah, that's just the shows and stuff you know what i mean that's just like at a craft show you mm -hmm. know it's like once or twice a year and it's hard i live in massachusetts so there's not a lot of art shows around just more you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah the, 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 there's probably a lot of people in the room with that issue right where they're locally at sometimes it's hard to get further reach um, yeah. sometimes your art isn't right for where you're at geographically. I've, I've seen that a bunch of times. And so then online becomes an easier way to get your art with further reach. 
So as far as like social medias are a good place to get exposure, um, I would say Facebook and Instagram. Um, TikTok is on the verge. We'll see if that one becomes one. Um, I've actually been here long enough that when I've Instagram wasn't always the best place to market your art. It is now. Um, TikTok is kind of in that place as well. So gradually um, it might become a viable place to spend some marketing time. Um, but Facebook and Instagram are going to be great. Um, getting your art out there for you, particularly with the art you just showed me, um, I would say video will be your friend. Um, okay. I bet other people have this problem too. Getting, getting some pictures sometimes and getting it to really come across. Um, yeah what you have can be difficult. I, I still want you to have pictures, but then video where you, you can do what you just did, right? And yeah, it's that, see the view things view. like that. Um, yeah. Sometimes people have issues with um, gold and flakes and things like that they might do with their art that they might put into abstract. So those things can be a little harder to show off like you just did. So that's why we do strongly encourage video um, going live, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I would say to avoid like, the Etsy's, um, there's a million of the marketplaces. Amazon's technically a marketplace. Um, the reason for that is as you go through selling your art, the one of the biggest things I encourage you and everybody to do is know who's buying your art, right? If, if someone walked up to you in a, a craft show and, and that you had done and bought a piece, if you knew who that person was and had their email, every time you created a new piece and were able to say, hey, um, Jeff made a new piece, thought you, I, I'd give you first crack at it. Uh, if you like it, you know, kind of an exclusive offer before I offer it to other people, you know, that, that's you kind of being exclusive with like a collector's list that you're building for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how you're able to keep selling, right. And be consistent. Mm -hmm. The problem with those marketplaces, and, and we do have articles on this, on our blog that I encourage you to read. There's a slew of other reasons, uh, to maybe avoid those kind of uh, platforms is mm -hmm. that they would never actually tell you who buys your art. So through Etsy, it's like, they're not going to let you know who Jeff was. And if you knew who Jeff and Steven and Stephanie and all these people are that have been yeah. buying art since the beginning of your career, mm -hmm. you're going to be in a much better place, right? You're, yeah. you're always going to be able to create art and put it right in front of those people who've bought before. And you, you, odds of success and consistent sales are much, much higher. Um, there are some other reasons too, you know, but yeah, I would say sell yourself first, like as far as directly is what I mean by that. Um, that's why Facebook, Instagram, you're going to know who those people are. Um, if you do want to get a website again, if you want to be online like that, sell direct, have your own personal website. Mm -hmm. uh, people are buying from you. You get that information. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's what I would encourage, you know, part of what we provide. I know I didn't really get into that. I, I always, no, yeah. but um, we're the really fast answer. So we can make sure it's for everybody is uh, we're kind of an all in one stop uh, for someone who wants to see what they can do with their art or improve the sales they already have. And that we actually do provide you with a website. It's your site. It's going to have your name on it. Um, that kind of thing. But when people buy, they buy from you. We're just specifically designed with features to sell art, right? Um, a lot of general platforms, Squarespace, Shopify, Wix, you've probably heard of a lot of those, GoDaddy, there's a million of them. Yeah. They have to make their websites work for any industry, lawyers, photographers, uh, they're trying to make it for people who sell ceiling fans, like anything. Sorry, I'm looking around the room for stuff. Um, <laughs> You selling your art ha has different friction, like different questions that people need to answer. Like I can go to a website and I can pick a t-shirt, right? And I, I know what size to order. Art's different. You got a lot of different things. So we're designed to give you like a proper setup for selling art and the problems you would have as an artist. Um, but then we also provide a marketing plan. Um, like we know where you should be marketing, tell you exactly what to do. And consulting and, and guidance when you need help, um, we'll help you out. Um, and like we have private forums and discords and things like that, where if you have marketing questions, we do sessions like this for our members. You can go in there you're, for your marketing. You have a problem. You can get real answers from our marketing team. So we're going to all that in the box to design to help you sell directly. So 
bothers me the Facebook thing, like you said, like the teacher teaches you how to set up a Facebook page. And that was the older way to do it, but now she's sh showing us how to do the newer one. But it's like, how does people even see your page? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't really see other people's pages. You know what I mean? You, you look through Facebook, you see people, but you don't see their pages. So it's like, how you even, how can you even sell your art that you can't see a page? I, I don't get that. And then I think that Facebook charges you like either $15 a month or so much a year. So you guys, when you set up your website, so is that going to be like available to, like you said, a bunch of things? So your art's getting out there further to a bunch of different things, entities, instead of just Facebook or Etsy, or like you said, Shopify, you know what I mean? Or, or is it going just to people who go in websites or look for art shows and art art because i see some people selling their art for a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars you know what i mean like different prices it's like i don't get it yeah so that that is more like a marketplace like it sees a marketplace um there's a lot of those for for art again none of them are going to tell you who your buyers are which is a problem and you're also a needle in a haystack there just hundred thousand to, I don't even know anymore. It could be a million people on some of those things. So it's it's going to be hard for people to find you and stick out. Um, mm -hmm. What we generally encourage is like have your own personal site. That way they're just coming and seeing your art, right? But you do, you help us with, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, uh, okay. right now, um, I just don't know how you do it. I don't understand it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll help you I out here. It. Honestly, right now, if you if you reach out, if you, if you are looking to get a website, um, uh -huh. right now we have a promotion where we just set it up for you. So you have to okay. figure that out. You give us the art and the pieces and your information and we'll stick it on there and set it up for you. Um, okay. so that's one less headache to deal with right out of the gate. But then you would have a store that you're marketing and we want to tell you where to like put your art in front of people. Um, I would encourage you to think of Facebook and Instagram um, online. Like if you were like what radio and TV commercials and billboards are, right? They're just different places for people to see your art and know about you. And we just want to tell you how to consistently post and things like that and which ones work. Um, so yeah, like oh. Facebook and Instagram, and we tell you how to do it, um, tell you what to do and how often and give you suggestions of posts. And when it comes to all the big holidays coming, we'll say, here's how do you do a Black Friday promotion and all that kind of stuff. So yeah it's, yeah, it's just a laid out plan that you can kind of work from and, you know, you just take your time, get a little bit better and better at it. So, um, but yeah, take it slow. And, uh, but that, that's what I definitely encourage big picture, no matter what, even if it's not with us, like sell direct, make those relationships with your like collectors and, uh, you'll be in a much better place. And so anytime you get off real, real quick. Okay, real, 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 I'm sorry, just really quick. Those will probably help other people too. So yeah. like you have the website and stuff and you're helping, but like a lot of this art too and other art too, people want, okay, I, I want you to, you know, design, you know, bears, you know what I mean? And put, you know, I want it, the background to be in this color for my house and this kind of glass. And then I put it together. But so to get orders like that and personalize that, is it better to do it more video or just to be able to talk to them on the phone or we able to talk to them on the phone. I don't want to get scammed. Do you know what I mean? And, and how do you actually contact people? Like you said, one-on-one is good, like the other guy said, but it's hard to do it online unless you do a phone call or, you know what I mean, see the, see the person. Yeah, so that that is a little more like a commission, which I'm sure a lot of people, you're right, are probably doing commissions in here as well. So, yeah. you know, there's always the art you've already created and selling that um those originals or, or prints if you're a photographer then there's also potential for commissions where someone wants you to custom make a piece or yeah. make a piece for them um generally you want to just have a page for that information on your site um you can have a ballpark of what you charge for that um so you can have a, a form where they inquire and they give you information <laughs> that happens and uh sorry about that it's my daughter okay. watching that I want to make sure you, you get the answer. So um, you can this have her too. <laughs> we got to hear a name now. Bailey. Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Yeah, Bailey. Um, <laughs> but uh, 
Oh, we got other people raising hands here. So let me wrap up yeah, real yeah. fast. Um, okay. You can have a commission page. Um, you can have a contact like email or phone number thing on there. So you could talk to them because, yeah, I wouldn't want you wasting time making something that's okay. yeah, or something like that. So you, you can always have that interaction. Um, I would encourage that if that's something you've run into okay. and burned on before. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking questions. All right. Let's see. I think I'm behind on the chat. And I don't know if anybody raised their hand in the video here, but let me see here. Let me scroll up so I don't miss anything. Where are we at here? All right. Well, Justin raised his hand and I see what's the best formula. I have questions. So let's unmute you. Just <laughs> there we go. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I uh yeah, I figured out my question. I typed in my question there. I think there's three questions that I listed. I oh, could no. not find I couldn't find the hand raise in the Zoom normally, but I couldn't either. <laughs> um if you want to read the next part, I don't know if I can sure, sure here. I, let me... I write better than I talk, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. Man, it looks like a nice day there behind you. I'm I'm a little jealous. It's raining, but it's still nice. <laughs> uh, man, we're, we're headquartered out of Austin, so it's just hot. Yeah, <laughs> stage yeah. of the year was just hot. Um, somebody was asking, she's saying that January to March is the best time to sell. Um, those are months that are great for like acquiring, uh, th those can be good months for like acquiring leads. And yeah, you, there are good times to sell in those months. But no, the, the best time to sell is here in about a month or so. So <laughs> that's about to start. Um, let's see here. How does the marketing work, especially if you have no client list? Uh, someone asked, um, you got to start building it. Um, so that's, that's where I say like marketing, it's, it's another word for exposure, right? You're trying to get your art in front of more people and find people who resonate and start following you and want to see your art, what it's about, that kind of thing. Um, so that's the kind of marketing you want to do. I don't want to go too deep down this rabbit hole, but um, as far as like building a client list, Facebook, Instagram uh, are good places to get exposure, get followers, that kind of thing. When you have a website, that's kind of like, think of it like your home base. And on there, any gathering of emails, you want to direct people to your site. So they have like a really nice buying experience. And then you start to get their emails, you have like a, a capture that pops up and they put their email in or any other places and you're going to start building that client list. So it just takes time. Um, but the sooner you start running the right model where you're actually gathering that information, the better, right? If you just started gathering like emails of people three years ago, right? Imagine where you would be at today. So it's really just getting that started. Um, and somebody said, yeah, October, December are, are the best times to be up and, and try and sell your art. Um, where do you recommend host websites for artists? Andrew asked that, uh, we actually do host websites for artists. Um, so I would say here, we are the best on the market. Uh, we have hundreds of features. So, um, specifically designed to help you guys. Let me see here. This is a longer question. I start selling photos and videos in at least format of a small business model. Mm -hmm. Term lease? This was your question, right, Justin? You still unmuted? Oh. Here, let, let, let's have you ask this one real quick. Yeah, uh, yeah so basically the idea I talked to was, um, like for example, I would I have to take photographs, uh, public transportation, and so I take the photograph and and I guess the question I was leaning on was whether there was more income or more money to be made rather than sell the individual piece to instead say you can use all 50, 50 of these photographs however you want for a month or two months or three months or nine months on your website and some of them were government most of it was government in this particular case. But that way, they don't own the right to the photograph. I can still use it to sell it otherwise. But also, it kind of, I guess, developed a client 
customer base where they're kind of return, I guess a consistent income flow is what I was thinking that there would be kind of a renewal subscription every month that they would buy access to my photographs and then they could take that and use it on their site. Because my interaction with some of the small businesses that I've been involved with was they didn't have any experience in creating something new. They're just not out fancy or not out privy, I guess. So if they were selling a particular product and they wanted a new fresh look for their website or their content, I was going out and finding nature photographs or bus photographs, or perfect, just generic type photographs that they could use. Um, and so that was, that's where that question was stemming from, if that makes sense, to kind of help clarify yeah, that. Interesting, because you're saying to do it, to like lease it out online is what you're saying. Yeah, so basically then that company would own that photograph and I'm not telling it to multiple companies, it's for multiple small businesses. And these are small businesses like hair salons or local auto shops and things like that are like, show these photographs and then they can use it. And then, um, and it's also kind of created sort of a, a working relationship. So I, I can come back to them and say, well, what are you doing this year? Do you want a fall photograph or winter photograph or spring or summer photograph? And so, you know, do you want a summer photograph of your forest preserve park or would you like a winter background, you know? And so rather than just selling it and then they using it, making them kind of return to me as a, I'm trying to create a returning customer in that sense. If that makes sense. Is that something that art storefront it, it has an experience in doing? So, yeah, that's like a different version of, I've, I've run into a few handful of painters and even photographers that have talked about doing things like that for uh, like in Hollywood where they use it in the background of like a set. So it's kind of rented or leased. Um, so I've run into people who've done that. Um, the problem I, want in, I run into is that, that that's a little unique. It's kind of a fun idea. Um, yeah, the question is what can you charge, right? how much can you charge enough that it's worth your time to do that? Yeah. Because a lot of times with like selling prints and, and those types of things, you, your margins could potentially be much higher and you could sell a higher volume faster, uh, potentially. I mean, if you already have some potential people that that could be clients for that, I, I, it wouldn't hurt to test it. Um, because you, yeah, you could actually just let them pay you. I, I almost want to say maybe go straight for like a subscription where they're, paying you just to keep updating it from time to time. And then they just are, that revenue is just coming in and then you just find better images uh, for what they need. And they'll just kind of ask you um, that could work. It is kind of weird in the digital sense that kind of once they've downloaded it, they kind of have it. Okay. You know? So now you're getting into legal stuff of cease and desist. And it, 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 there's, some complications you'd have to figure it out and then also depending on what you're charging it might not be worth your time whereas like just if you spent that time acquiring like art buyers who are just going to buy a print you're going to have really good margins because i think that was another question somebody had was like pricing for originals and prints a lot of times with prints you're able to start with at least like a 250 percent margin off of like the cost of what it costs to be printed and mark it up so that's what generally a lot of our artists do or more, right? And you can find your sweet spot with pricing through time. Um, but, but ultimately uh, you make a lot more there. So you make the most when you're selling. And so then you just got to weigh, is that going to be a better way to sell than versus the other? Um, I like, I like the thought. I would, okay. if you have some potential buyers, maybe test it, see what, see what it does for you. Yeah. So, I guess so. It's art storefront generally, I guess, the focus is, is art collectors, right? Is that more the, the general audience that we're focused on? Wait, say that one more time. Sorry. Is, is, the, art, is the company, is art storefront, is the most, is the market or the audience that you guys are mostly focused on helping us reach are generally art collectors, so people who just want to hang a piece of art in their office or their home, as opposed to the example I was showing. Yeah, correct, correct. Generally, we want to help uh, you guys get your art, um, sell originals, sell prints, that kind of thing. Um, better margins in that. You know, we do have, I get this question a lot less as far as like people wanting to sell like digital prints and stuff like that. Just, it, it would need to be really high volume and it's just not a ton of money 
Um, so, I mean, you could still do that, but a lot of you generally who make a living off of selling their art. A lot of times it's selling originals and prints is what kind of moves okay. it. And then also merchandise, because uh, those are good like footholds to get people to slowly buy and grow your list. So there's a lot of tactics in there. But, uh, that, um, and then the, I guess the last question I had was, which I kind of left it right there was, um, uh, if it doesn't escape me real quick, but uh, I was thinking that the, uh, shit, I just lost my thought. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Well, um, here, well, let's, uh, the next one is actually Melissa who has her hand raised. So let's, let's, let's get Melissa here. Let me hit the button and uh, chat a little bit. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a, based on your background, I'm going to go on a limb and uh, say painter. Yeah. 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 Painter. Yeah. Painter. Yeah. Um, I have a two part question, but it, it connects. So for somebody who's never tried to sell their work before, um, but maybe they have an online presence a little bit in social media, like for acting or some other, you know, influence or some other thing. Right. Um, my question is, is there a way to kind of have a crossover so you're not running so many accounts? Like here's my actor account. Here's my painter account. Here's my YouTuber. Right. To integrate that perhaps. Um, also, is there like coaching for somebody who is probably not ready yet to try to sell, but maybe is looking at working up to getting enough pieces for like six months launching and then all the um, stuff you're doing to get eyeballs on your work in the interim, you know, because laying the foundation for the influence, if you will. Okay. Does that make sense? Let me start with the first part and then we'll go into the second. So sometimes it does make sense. Um, I would say a little bit of a case by case basis on if those are going to blend well. Um, Here's an extreme example, like kind of what you were saying, like acting, and then you you start painting. Like if Kim Kardashian started uh, painting tomorrow, you think she wouldn't take advantage of her reach that she right, has? That's what I thought of, yeah. So, so yeah, you, you want to do that when you can. Um, there are some times it doesn't make sense because we have like, you, you imagine like wedding photographers who want to start selling their fine art. Sometimes they can transition some buyers, right? Somebody hires you for a wedding. They like the way you shoot. They're going to like your fine art, right? And so you partner it. Um, you link to, you have two websites that link to each other. It's kind of like, having two rooms in a, in a house and they get okay. one um, based on what they're, they're needing. So I would say, yeah, sometimes it makes sense um, but to combine those. There are times where it wouldn't. Um, your instance might sound like it could work um, depending on content because that, that's the only other thing. It's like, imagine if you have two types of art and they're different brands, like this one's like really kid friendly. You're trying to get in like nurseries and stuff like that. And then you have like some other like totally different like content those might make sense to have them separate um had artists do that um but with your what you're saying it might make sense because it's all in the same vein right it's like jim carrey paints right that guy's selling his paintings and using his uh being famous as an actor to they're using the then you're developing both those brands simultaneously you know so if you have a film come out or a show or you know they can cross market okay that makes sense exactly so um yeah, a lot of instances, I, I just don't want to say that across the blanket and then be wrong for somebody else in the room. But yeah, um, that's how I'd look at it. And then I don't know if that, that probably didn't cover the second part of your question. Yeah. So for like somebody like I've never tried to sell a piece, I just paint and I have a bunch of my paintings around my house. And um, I've just never put intention around that because I've been busy with other things. But with COVID, everything, including acting, it's like, you know, it's slowed down. And we've all had more time. Um, okay. And I have some friends who are painters and it just, very recently I started thinking, you know, I got the opportunity, the invitation to hang some of my stuff at a restaurant locally. And I was kind of thinking maybe, or is that even the best venue? Um, and then I came across you guys. So I thought, you know, that's interesting. So for somebody who hasn't like launched yet, but wants to build into that and put intention around creating the portfolio to do that well, um, are there tools if you're not already experienced, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's great that get your art in those coffee shops and things like that. Um, more eyeballs seeing your work is, is what you want, right? Online, offline, that kind of thing. Online's nice because you, you're able to get, you know, with the right tactics in front of more people uh, right. versus like depending on the foot traffic of a uh, coffee shop. The same thing can go with galleries, right? You're very limited to only the people walking through there. Um, 
so yeah, I would say partnering what you do on and offline is also good, but Facebook, Instagram, I, I would post there. Like you said, it, it sounds like the, you're following are probably people you want to put your art in front of. So um, you can do that. Um, if you do want to have like a better buying experience, get a website um, where people can come. That's nice because you can start to do other things uh, with, with features there. The other nice thing is like all of our artists that do like coffee shops and other stores at the hotels, they get their art in. Um, there's like QR codes that you can put mm -hmm. underneath your, you know, we have like a feature where it gets you an R, a QR code. You put that under the art. There's those things are everywhere now, menus, and it's just gotten huge. So they can just scan it and go right to your website and be shopping that art. So you, again, you just want to make it really easy for people to be able to buy your art versus okay. they see it, they like it. Who do I talk to here? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, good, good things. Cool. But yeah, keep at it. Um, keep growing. Be consistent with your posting um, of your art. Try different pieces, see which ones get good feedback. And um, yeah, if you want to really go for it and you know you want to be an artist and sell your art, let us know. We'll be happy to get you fixed up for the site. So. Okay, and let's see here. Membership, website, monthly fees. Oh, uh, someone's asking about our pricing. Yeah, I can talk about that real fast and then we'll get to more questions. So uh, our price, kind of ranges. It, it just depends. We, we have different levels. Um, our minimum investment uh, right now with our discounts is down to $1,000 uh, as a one-time like membership fee. And then $44 a month ongoing posting for the store. And then on the upper end goes up to $26.99 as a discounted price right now. And then $59 a month ongoing there. Um, with that scale, the upper end has like every feature bell and whistle. And uh, we can always send you guys example websites and stuff. And you can always put in a request and talk to somebody on my team and they'll answer more questions and make rec recommendations for you guys specifically with where you're at. Um, but that's got everything. We just, you know, that upper end, not always in everybody's budget. We get that. So we made options where you can start with a few less features um, and get started, start to grow your audience, see what, what happens with your sales and and you can always upgrade at any point. So it's just kind of designed for you guys to, to build up to that. You know, ultimately we want you to have every tool at your disposal to make selling as easy as possible. Um, that said, we also, as I mentioned, we have a website promotion where we'll like do the setup for you. So instead of you guys trying to guess and see what like setting up the site for like best practices for selling art are, we're just going to do it for you. You send us our images, your images and your information. They'll put it on the store and turn it on. And you guys can start focusing on marketing and, and building your, your audience. Um, so that's pricing generally. And let me see here. Someone mentioning the hand raise icon. I see that in here. Uh, long conversation on that. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Linda's asking about how to ship. Artwork, um, it's a cart, how much do you ship? Let me put pieces together and ship. Taxes and shipping. Um, part of our site setup thing right now is we'll set up the taxes for you guys. You don't have to worry, another thing you don't have to worry about, check that box off. Um, as far as uh, shipping originals, can depend where you're at a little bit geographically, um, but uh, we have a whole private community of artists that are selling. You can go in there and kind of get some feedback and they'll, give you some pointers, things to avoid the first time you ship one. Um, and then our support team also can help give you guys some guidance on like uh, shipping costs and stuff like that. Cause it, it, it's gonna vary with everybody in the room. Um, what is this art shattered? Uh, lost me on that. Andrew, yes, um, we do offer print on demand. Um, prints are great to offer um, even you know, you want to have art at different price points. So if you have originals, not everybody can afford original. So having prints is, is like having another tier, you know, and if you're a photographer and you only have prints, um, you also, an upsell is to do like limited editions, right? And there's some techniques on how to do that and like charge a premium for it. That's your way of like having an original and really going to the upper end with like pricing and stuff like that. But the same thing can happen with 
um, prints. Like if you, you know, I, I wish I had the permission to just go buy art and stick it on this wall behind me. That would not fly. I would get uh, it taken down <laughs> by someone else who would get vetoed. I've got to run that by uh, the lady. So having merch and things like that, those are things I could just buy on a whim if I really love your art. And it's another way to get me um, with my email and now I'm part of your list. And then when wall art, like space opens up, we can talk about it and I could buy bigger, right? So it's always good to hit those different tiers. Um, that way you have something for sale to anybody who comes to your website. It's really going to maximize your opportunities. I mean, there's a million reasons you can think of the young couple who wants to buy some art and they, they start to fall in love with your work younger, right? Can't afford an original time goes by, you know, they love your piece. It's special to them. They start to get a little older, they move new home. Now they're shopping originals. So again, that's why it's like, knowing your buyers for the whole course of like growing your art sales and your business uh, essentially is, is key, right? It's the only way you're going to get those sales and that just way more success. Let's see here. Explain to us what we put on the website. Um, your art, <laughs> your uh, name, uh, we integrate it. Uh, I guess I not sure specifically what they mean on that, but you do want to have a bio, uh, some of those general things, links to your social medias, and then your social medias, you want those linked over to your site. So it's all kind of interconnected. They're like in your little uh, world for your art there. Um, how get set up on websites don't see in advertising. Here, Linda, let's unmute you for a second. I'm not sure what you meant there. Can you hear me, Linda? Oh, yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I was trying to explain, like, Art Shattered, she sends out to lots of people who are on the website and does art, right? They have a formula, which I was trying to explain to you, that guy was asking about, is you take 50 cents and say, if you have a piece that's 15 times 30 for canvas, and you multiply that, I think that's 450 times 0.50 would equals $225 for that piece, starting about that price. To so sell that's like about an what the going prices are, I guess. That's how you kind of figure out how to price your pieces. That's what they were saying. So you're Is talking that, about pricing an original that way? Yeah, I guess that's like the kind of what the going rate is, I guess, for art. That's what they do is they take the 50 cents times whatever your piece is. Like say they're 15 by 30. Is 450 multiply that by 0.50 equals 225 dollars for that piece i don't know just that's what they're yeah. saying a bunch of people it's it's like a, a chart you it's, know and you put down the size is that like what you guys do too or you just price it yourself um for originals so so 250 margin is, is a good place for like prints um, but then you do want to be above that, like so where you see where your prints fall, and then you do want your originals to obviously be more than that. Um, oh. Again, that, that's someone's recommendation, it sounds like. Oh, that okay. might work for, for your art. It could. Um, it just depends on size and things like that. Um, yeah. I mean, do that math and, and you're comfortable selling your art at that price point, then, then sell it at that price. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. It, it's the thing. It's not blanket for everybody. You know what I mean? Someone who does like poor art, for example, I'm going to give you two kind of extreme examples. Someone who's doing poor art, they are able to create a lot of art. So, you know, they might want to like their business could be more catered to like selling volume of like, mm -hmm. whereas like an oil painter who, you know, needs to stop, let it dry, go back. Like it's going to take them a lot longer to create or mm -hmm. like yeah, if they're like paint. A, I've seen this. Someone paint me oh, and it looks like a real like picture uh, yeah. that that's way out the window because they're going to charge an extreme premium for that and for their time um, that go yeah. into the originals and that's where you see those huge price points come in so that yeah it just varies um, you know if that's what people say for starting do the math and see if that number makes sense for how you want to sell your art because you might yeah. you want to make sure people are paying for your, your time and your creativity that, that go into it and you know yeah. they don't they don't see the pieces that yeah that 
didn't make it that you're not selling and all those expenses. And Mm -hmm. there's a lot that you guys do. Um, And, you know, we want you guys to make money for that. Well, especially when you're putting like a piece like this, there's a lot of glass on it and time that you put in, it's expensive. Or like this, you know what I mean? Seriously. And you're cut each piece of the flower there, you know what I mean? To make that rose, you know what I mean? Or to make these flowers in that piece. You paint it and you put all this stuff together, you know, and then use vitrograph and all that stuff. So you're cutting glass, you know. Um, you make strips of glass. Yeah, it's just a lot of work, you know, and, and time, supplies. Like you said, it probably costs more money, you know. And like you said, you're, but the, what the guy was saying, but, okay, you really can't make prints because this is more, you know, I, you know, I'm making, you know, just a picture. Yeah, I could take this. I just started doing this, you know, and then just take a photograph and sell it out. But you can't if people want it with the, the glass and the resin. So you have to make each piece for those people. Mm-hmm. You can't just sell it fast. Do you know what I mean? Like take prints. Well, yeah. Is that what that guy was talking about? Like you take an art piece, you take a picture of it, you, 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 you know what I mean? And then just sell prints. You can't really sell prints doing this kind of type of art. Um, you could. Um, and that, but that's what makes the original so valuable. Cause yeah. you, not the same. Wait, um, I'll, I'll tell you this real fast and this is good for everybody. Sure. A, a lot of artists have some things similar to yours and like that, the depth of paint and things like that. You can't always capture that. Um, Matthew, we referenced him earlier. Um, when this is why we say like going live, like doing what you just did, showing your art that way really yeah. helps. Why? Um, his art, you know, the, you see it in like his social media and stuff that he sells prints. You can do it. Um, they look fantastic, but the original, like if you really look at it, his paint is actually coming like three quarters of an inch off the canvas or an inch. It's like coming out. It's yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah. so I say what you guys do is it's fantastic. Um, yeah. that's why it's like really showing it the right way is important and, and presentation matters um a lot so well, perfect and let's see uh lily's got her hand up i hit the ask to unmute here hey lily how are you doing hi i'm good thanks uh, i am really new to this uh, it's the first time i've joined one of these meetings with you welcome uh, you you email me a lot what but uh <laughs> a lot <laughs> every day and so I thought I'd go ahead and join just to see what it's all about. So um, it yeah. sounds like it, a lot of it is selling prints. Is that correct? Reproductions, no. prints? It's whatever you want to sell, you know. Okay. So when you, when you look at like the art market as a whole, mm-hmm. the, like if you look at just art, art, art sales for like originals, Mm-hmm. They're sold at a higher price point. So it, there's actually more like revenue almost there, sort of. Mm-hmm. And it's less transactions, right? Because right. we've got some painters that do 50, you know, 20 to $50,000 for an original, right? So right. one sale there is going to equal more print sales, right? It takes more print Correct. sales. Well, that. Um, so I would say prints sell in a higher volume um, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, but no, it's about selling what you're selling. You know, we even have okay. sculptors, right? They can't sell prints at all. So. so so, I have a website already and had it for several years. So I, I want to keep that name if I were to go with you. How would I, if oh, you yeah. were going to design a website? Yeah, no, um, I assume you have like your first and last.com or something like that. So mm-hmm. it'd be like lily.com. Um, yeah. So if, if you wanted to come on board, we would essentially make you like a temporary one. It's like Lily dot art storefront. So nobody sees it while we get it all ready. And then the last step is just to bring your domain name over and on the store. And and that way people are still going there. Right. Cause that's probably on, you know, if you had business cards and things like that. So they still know it's on everything. It's on everything. Um, And I, and the thing is I mostly, it's just my personal preference, but I don't like to do, Jaclays or those types of prints. I want my um, clients to have a one of a kind only. I never repeat a painting. 
So the only way I would do prints is on paper and matted with mm -hmm. a limited edition. But uh, so because I, I mostly sell originals or pretty much sell originals, how would I go about getting my getting the word out there uh, maybe a little more than I have right now? Because I have a website. I'm on Facebook. I'm fairly well known in Vegas because I'm in many groups and I do a lot of shows and charities and donations and things. But still, occasionally I go through these where it is suddenly I'm out of paintings because everybody's buying paintings on my website. And then suddenly there's no sales at all. So it's kind of a dip, you know, roller coaster. I try to keep it, um, you know, to a point where I can sell originals mostly. And how what's, in your opinion, the best way to go about doing something like that because it sounds like storefronts is more about prints and do huh. you do the prints yourself do you have a do you print uh, those or yeah well we have like an integrated print on demand feature uh Got so it. basically what we did is we can flip a switch connect you to like fine art archival museum quality printers um mm -hmm. have them do the printing for you we don't personally own a printer um why well, i say we don't care if you sell prints or not. <laughs> it's totally up to you. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I, just want I to sell you. through a couple of different places, but I'm not thrilled about it only because there's such a large amount of artists on a couple of these there. I mean, there's, it's probably a million artists selling on the same site. It's very difficult. You probably know which one I'm talking about, which is a printer. Wait, are you more fine art? Fine art America. Yeah. So they're, they're more yeah. like a marketplace. Yeah. So you're, that's the kind of yeah, needle. Everything is just print. Yeah. But yeah. it's real. it's difficult to get your, you on top for people to see your art. Yeah. You know, because the algorithms in there and stuff that I, I don't understand as well. Um, and do you use a lot of algorithms in your web? The algorithm, if you knew how it worked, right? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So there, it, that's the downside there is they're, they're not really going to tell you who your art buyers are either. Um, right. No, so what's, what's nice on ours is uh, we connect you to a printer if you want to offer prints. And um, mm -hmm. uh, what they do is they're huge companies. So they know what people are buying and that's what they have up there as the, you know, they print like mm -hmm. all paper, canvas, uh, all the different wood, acrylics. There's lots of different options yeah. and their frames are on there as well. Cause so with ours, it's like a turnkey, they'll print frame and ship it all automatically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can control what media is you're offering so you just go in the back mm -hmm. and literally toggle it off like a light switch and then canvas would be gone it would just disappear from the front of the website so it's really simple as well okay. um i mean depending on how much time we have here i could actually just show you that one thing just just for giggles um but did you have another question before i, I do that i can pull that up here no um, i think uh, i I'm trying to judge whether or not I'm a good fit uh, because of the fact that I don't really get into selling prints as much. And, and that seems to be where a lot of the money seems to be generated on um, from what I'm seeing on storefronts. A lot of the artists say, oh, I made this much, you know, and all this, but it's all prints, you know. And because I'm kind of, I'm not, I really like people to have the original. I don't like to repeat a painting. I really want people to have an original that they own and never have to have a repeat of it. Um, and so printing for me is, you know, only because people will ask, I can't afford the original. Can you do me a print? You know, so, um, mm -hmm. so they have to get it on demand, basically, the press. So, you know, there's a couple things to unpack with what you just said. Mm -hmm. One, um, to the last part, you said you have some people asking for prints. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, oh my God, I'm gonna mess this up. But it, that's like a, you ever heard of the thing where it's like the tip of the iceberg, right? It's yeah. like you hear from these complaint, complaining kind of mm -hmm. people who want one so bad, they take that initiative. Think yeah. about the people who don't ask. Yeah. Just having it available. It doesn't cost you anything. They it's on demand, right? You're not going to pay for a print or like, right. Unless they buy it. So it just be there. I, I'm yeah. super curious to see if you open that up and like, you know, had a website with those offerings, would you mm -hmm. sell them? Just because there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I got a call. I give up. I do that. So I know, yeah, it's, yeah. I know it's a lot of people. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's not too hard. I give up. Yeah. Um, and so you you might be leaving money on the table just by doing mm -hmm. that. Um, so that, that's yeah. super fascinating. I, I have another thing. This is, this is more about us, but I, I just 
Mm-hmm. I'm always so fascinated. Um, mm-hmm. Just and I love talking to you guys. So, um, what what else gave you the impression that we're just about Prince? I, I just find I find that fascinating because I, I sit here and I, I oh, you are to sell original. Uh, a couple of a couple of Facebook a uh, couple of face people uh, artists on Facebook talked about uh, their experiences. Uh-huh. You know, they had you had them videoed or whatever and uh, reviews and what I what I got out of the ones that I looked at was that, and sometimes you see one on there where it says, so-and-so just made this much money, this, you know, and then I go in and I look and it's pretty much mostly prints that they've been selling. Okay. And so that's why I was wondering how many originals actually go out the door through this way of, you know, working. So because that's what I want to sell. I want to sell originals. I want my originals to be out there. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's lovely to have a print and, you know, I know I do, I do do prints and I do sell prints in the gallery and um, I, but I have a limited amount of prints that I sell because I'm just not into doing that. I prefer that force them to buy that original. Yeah. <laughs> so type of print. yeah. Just buy the original, <laughs> save yeah. up, whatever. Anyway, but um, you need to send yeah, that it's just kind of a, a concept I've had in my head ever since I started uh, painting for many, 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 many years ago that I always thought it would be uh, since, you know, Tennessee towards the old masters and how they didn't do prints. Everything's original. Yeah, that's interesting. So, I, I just maybe maybe we need to send uh, you artists uh, an email about the recent originals being sold or something and separate it from the, yeah. from the, the photographers. Really. I'd like to see, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see what's going on with the, you know, artists and selling originals and how's that working for them on this, you know, this venue. So, um, thank you for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, maybe I need to talk to somebody on a, a different level or something, you know, not at the zoom, but you know, yeah, yeah. Maybe person. Um, you can always reach out and someone on my team will, will, yeah, give you a, give you a ring and, and chat with you and kind of see okay. what, you know, plan works for you and, and options and that kind of stuff. And, um, but yeah, I, I just, that's so, so interesting because a lot of photographers act, this is funny. You'll love this photographers who reach out. They say, this is just for artists, right? They sell original. Oh no, photography. It seems like photography would be like really a great spot for I'm them. Telling you, I've talked to a thousand <laughs> artists and photographers. The photographers go, This is for artists. And the artists go, Yeah, this is for photographers. Yeah. It's for both of you guys, <laughs> for all of you guys. If, if it's yeah. hanging on a wall, you, you need a certain buying experience and you need certain features. And people who sell originals, yeah you know, for the yeah. price points and like high end limited editions, this goes for photographers too, because we have photographers to sell limited editions for two to 5k, right? Um, when you get to that level and you're selling art at those levels, like someone who's going to buy that, they want a wall preview tool. They want to see what it's going to look like on their wall in their home before they buy it. Like those things become essential uh, to, to grow that, yeah. that kind of thing. and it saves you guys a ton of time. There's lots of benefits. Um, I, also commissions, as I do a lot of commissions. So I don't know how that works with that. It's offered on the side, I guess, if you. Yeah, you can do, you can do commissions. You can also um, uh, offer, uh, like we have people who teach classes, that kind of stuff. Here real fast, because this will take two seconds. You kind of asked about this. So I, I, I pulled it up. This is like the back end of one of our, our sites. Um, so like, let's say you uploaded this art. It's pretty cool. Um, our software actually analyzes it and populates the sizes for you so if you mm-hmm. paint like a landscape piece or like a landscape photographer like takes a shot yeah only going to show pieces that are that size um so it, i always say we won't chop the wings off an eagle or or the head off it won't like right. shove your art in like a standard size which a lot of those marketplaces can do right um and then any size you don't want to offer you can just delete it so you have total control um, oh, I see. It also doesn't offer anything bigger than the resolution um, can offer of the file. So you're not going to, it won't let you offer anything that's going to come out blurry. Um, right. But then to what you were asking is like the medias. So you mm-hmm. could just toggle like, uh, let me turn off the metal. Maybe I only want right. to offer these. You hit save and then the options just disappear off the front end. So like I said, it, it really is as easy as flipping a light switch there. Right. So. It, it's similar to Fine Art America when I, I actually purchase my prints through them because they actually do a good job with um, 
my my artwork when I do a prints made from watercolor paper though but I didn't see that option on any of those but I have all mine printed on watercolor paper because it, it really infuses the paper with the colors I have very bright colored rainy day scene type paintings that are very bright and so in order to get the sharpness and the clarity and the brightness uh, watercolor paper seems to be the best so far that I've I've run across on that so I, I didn't see that option there. I'm surprised. <laughs> that, that's just a demo website. It's not like a real website. It's just one I can like yeah. play with. I'm not breaking somebody's yeah. website. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well thank you for answering the question. I don't want to take up all your time, um, yeah, but I, mean, uh, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm I, loving it. I'd like to know. I'd probably want to talk to somebody a little more in detail, uh, not here on Zoom, but um, so then I have your email addresses. <laughs> I have all of your numbers. So. <laughs> Perfect. We'll reach out. We'll be happy to. I, I, I can always have somebody uh, personally reach out as well if, if you'd like. So whatever's yeah, best. Yeah, you have my email. Definitely. Definitely. All right. <laughs> Definitely. Perfect. Uh, well, Andrew, right. chat. Well, thank you for. Thank you. Um, he asked, "Are we serving or hosting websites too?" So um, we're hosting a site for you um, now for servers. Um, you know, we don't have like. A garage full of servers. We actually use uh, AWS, so Amazon servers. So essentially, the best um, servers you can use on the market. And yeah, if, if things are down on the server front, it's national news generally because that means Netflix is down and HBO is down and, and all those big companies as well. Um, and yeah, someone asking. We have. Uh, I guess they might have been asking what other types of art. You know, any store with us is full functioning e-commerce is the term for fancy online term for store. Um, but you can sell anything, originals, prints, you can let people pay for classes or pay for a, a commission. Um, yeah, we have people teach what classes, sculpture. Uh, I've seen people paint on paint glasses, ornaments come holiday time, which is coming up. So you can sell it all. Let's see, did I miss any questions in the chat? I hope I didn't. And does anybody else on video, feel free to raise your hand and ask a question. Missing anybody? I was gonna say if, Jen, you got a question? Oh, it's in the channel. There you go. Hi. There it is. It wasn't letting me in for a second to go. Hi. Um, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I came in, I just, I saw the email and I came in late and I just decided to just jump on. So, um, so here I was just, my big question is really like, so my artwork, I usually do larger scale and I started years and years ago also. And I started with prints and then I gradually went into, um, and I did really well in my business. I sold so many prints. I was featured in many magazines. I did everything myself, but I used the blogs at the time to market my work. And they were much bigger back then than they are now. Um, also, the amount of people doing prints was a lot less. So the profit margin was a lot bigger for me. So the people started coming in doing prints. And then immediately I jumped out and started going into uh, original artwork. So I wanted my goal was to work less, uh, make less and, uh, work less, sorry, and make more money. Um, mm -hmm. so that was the goal. And so I ended up going and starting small doing like paintings that were maybe $500 each, which was very low at the time for me. And then, um, years later, I think I stayed that way for like five years, which was so undercutting myself. And then I ended up looking around and I realized for the amount of years and experience I had, I should have been selling for a lot more. And so I tripled my prices. I literally did. So yeah, I just took a chance and I knew that I was going to lose a ton of people in the process. And so that's what I did. And I, and I did, I lost. Um, but then I started figuring out ways to market myself to gain those few people that were going to give me, you know, between my artwork, maybe $2,500 to $4,500 per piece. Mm -hmm. um, and so all I needed was to find right at the second, to two or three people to buy per month for me. And I was fine. So I did that for a while as well, but I would say the last two months have been a very, a bit of a struggle. And I don't know if it's the economy, but I was looking at art storefronts and I'm trying to figure it all out. Cause I get all these emails about want to talk and all this stuff. And I'm just still trying to understand like how this process works. And for somebody, I mean, and I know you've mentioned the high priced 
Some people are selling for a higher price, maybe 5K prints, whatever. So to the point of the lady that was speaking before, I don't know her name, but um, Illy, or I think her name is Lily. Mm-hmm. Lily. And she said about prints, I had the same question as well. I thought maybe it was mostly centered on prints, but obviously it's not. So for somebody like me that wants to sell these larger pieces, and I work from home, I have a studio in my apartment. How is this, how, how is this beneficial for me? Like, what's the difference between you guys and what I can do on my own? Um, save the time. Save time? Yeah, a lot of time savings. Um, it would be hard to put together what we have by yourself. You know, it, it's hard as a, like, like a, you're like a solopreneur, right? Like you got to figure out marketing. Like you've got to create, you've got to sell it. Like there's a lot of things to do. Um, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of work for one person. So here, yeah. you know, instead of you, I mean, what are your options, right? You, you need a website to sell your art, right? You need a store where people can buy it. Um, you can find like a generic one and try and make it work for selling art and try and add features and all this stuff. And then every time, like you got a question, is my site up to date? Is it the best practices? Like there's a lot of work there and like, oh, let me go update it and let me go work on it. No, they did an update. Now all my widgets are broken and like all this stuff. And that's, that's a lot in itself. Then you got to go figure out, all right, where do I market my art? What are the best, best places to put it? Uh, when are the times to be posting? You know, when should I run sales? Like when, when should I do these different types of promotions? Like it's just a lot, right? Um, we also encourage everybody, anyone who's like running any size of business, right? Whether you're testing it, having um, like consultants or mentors that you're able to like talk to and like get coached through and answer questions, you know, we put all that together instead of you trying to figure it out. Like also a printing is a whole different thing, right? Oh, do I print it locally? Now I got to ship it. Now I'm like wasting time going to approve prints and then now let me go ship it. Like there's just a lot of other work to be done. We take a lot of that stuff off, off the table for you. You don't have to worry about it. Like here, um, anytime you're on our like top plan, when we constantly are adding features like that are better art selling features, like we on average add about 12 to 15 features a year, right? You don't have to think about it here. Like you, your site is always going to be like optimized for selling art in the best, like cutting way, cutting edge ways, uh, on the market when you're here, you don't have to worry about that. Right. Or you could worry about it yourself. Um, you, am I marketing in the best places I should be marketing to get the best exposure? Um, when should I start doing a lot of TikTok? Like what, there's a lot of people who waste time on like Pinterest and other things. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. those spend your time here. You want to sell the most, you want to get the most exposure. Like we have over like 7,000 artists and photographers we work with. We can see what the best things are and we're able to like feed that information back to you guys. So you can be successful marketing and really giving yourself the best shot to get your art out there. And if something's not working, you can get help, right? You're just not alone because so many of you guys are out there all by yourself trying to figure out what to do and piecing, piecemealing things together. Here you can get one cohesive thing where your website is literally designed with your marketing plan and it's all just smooth and a lot easier, less headaches. Um, so yeah, somebody could put it all together themselves, but I wouldn't, I, I really wouldn't. Like if you were my mother, sister, cousin, grandma, I would say do this. At the prices we have, it's so much more economical to offload most of that work and have the prints be automated and have like a, just a fine art print company that's like archival it's the best you can do and it's just automated you don't have to mess with it at all so it's just nice to offload a lot of those tasks it frees up a lot of our artists to be able to create more you know I think Lily said that that can be a problem for her if she starts selling (laughs) I gotta go back and start creating so I have more to sell if you're worried about adding features to your website and updating these things like when are you gonna have time to create you know, um, so, well, hold on a second. So I, I have run my site through Shopify, which I recently got, I hadn't had that before. I had a, somebody privately do the website before, and I had to depend on them to do the changes. 
um, which, you know, I, I, it was just like a bit of a pain after a while. And then I ended up going on to Shopify That's and it. I love it. I, I, I'm, so what if somebody has Shopify can work it? And so what do they do with their website at that point? I mean, we still have a lot of people move over from Shopify to us. Um, if you weren't selling art, like if you were selling, I don't know, plates or pots and pans and candles or something like that, I would tell you to go to Shopify. But if you're trying to sell art, like you need to go to a company that's designed for selling art. Like someone who sells real estate, they're not going to go to Shopify, right? They go to a company that is specifically designed to integrate with like the MLS and stuff, like the things they need for their industry, that's where they go get a website. That's what we are. We're like Shopify, but designed specifically for what you guys are doing. The only difference also is we're not just a website. You know, there's a lot of companies, Shopify, Google it, 98% of Shopify sites fail. Um, all the businesses that on, that's a huge amount of, you know, they're, they're happy with you just having a website, whatever their monthly is. I don't even remember off the top of my head and they'll just, they're happy with that. They're cool. They're like, all right, that's fine. You know, here we only work with artists and photographers, right? And if our websites aren't optimized, then you guys lose and we lose, like we're in this together, you know, this is a partnership. So we want you guys to be as successful as we can. That's why we're constantly adding features. We're evaluating things to see where it can be better. There's like a whole team of developers specifically constantly improving a website and adding art features for you um, for as low as $1,000 and $44 a month. I mean, that's amazing. There's also a whole team of marketers looking at like what's working and trends for specifically selling art, not just like selling other things. And they're making you exactly a laid out plan of what to do. I mean, it's awesome. Like it, what we do doesn't exist out there. Um, that's why we say we don't really have any competitors because nobody's doing what we're doing. And uh, I don't know. It's just exciting. We love it. Um, look at What does the website look like? What does the shop, what does your guys' website look like? I haven't seen, I don't know if I've seen like what they look like. Um, and how you can find them like how does a regular person just go and find the website of one of your I guess artists that are working with you guys so how do I, these websites look like what do they look like yeah here I'll show you one why not generally when you reach out we'll send you you know a bunch of examples so the, we, we can get you more but just so you can see one so yeah here's one of our artists a uh, painter I picked a painter because you're a painter. Sorry, photographers. We have plenty of photographer examples too. Um, but yeah, you see it's a nice, clean buying experience. And then once you get into, what, which one do we want to click on here? You want to, let's go sunflowers. Uh, so you see we have like a, a feature here for like designers, you know, as for the people who start to get designers and they can actually shop by color, things like that. But we're going to go into this rainbow one because I like it better than the other one. And, and you see, we're just optimized. Like see here, prints, you can easily toggle over, see the original, looks like this one's already sold. And then it's just a really nice laid out buying experience. If you wanna buy merch, there you go. You can try it on. If you wanna buy a canvas piece, you can actually see depth, right? And the painting, um, then people can pick the size. So all the sizes are right here, nice and easy. Pick a big size. Then they can, uh, let me see here, oh, maybe you choose, sometimes they have different options for how deep the wrap is. You can change the border color around it or somebody could buy a frame. And so then it's gonna enable you to shop the frame. So here we go. You can try different frames on the art. It's really nice. It's just really designed so people can see finished product always Make sure you have a black frame. People generally order black. I know you might but not. That's, that's for the print, for the prints, I'm assuming, because if it was an original, like for instance, I or other artists on here may have an original in their studio. How do you ship that? I mean, do you ship it to you and then you frame it? I mean, uh, yeah, you, you would ship or it. not. Yeah, that wouldn't be very efficient for you to send them to us. You, you would want to ship the originals. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you, you'll ship those out. Um, and then the print that's just offloaded, they'll print frame and ship it. 
Um, okay, so I'm saying so what I'm saying is the the prints are um framed, not originals. You could offer a frame with a you could offer an original with a frame if you wanted to. Most people don't. Um, generally, at those higher price points, a lot of times people are going to want to go get it custom framed uh, when you get into those types of sales a lot of time. Yeah. Um, you know, e even with some of the prints, um, oh man, I'm trying to remember the stats. If I knew the number off the top of my head, I don't, I don't want to mislead you, but um, it is a smaller number of people who order frames. A lot of times it's about giving them a buying experience and a nice idea of what it will look like when it's framed. Um, that's why I say most people are ordering online. A lot of times it's a black frame. Um, I think of it personally of like, if I were buying this for my mom, I'm going to want to get it. It's a gift. It's turnkey. I'm going to go ahead and get it framed, that kind of thing. If I'm buying it for me to put in my home. I'm going to want to get the art and then you know, get a frame that fits with the room. And so that's going to happen probably 99% of the time with like an original or a limited edition at the higher price points. Those people are going to want to go get it custom framed. So I wouldn't stress too much on frames on originals, um, but you can offer them because it is more essential revenue for you. Yeah. yeah so if we, we did offer them, we'd have to send the original to whom? To you guys? That's what that's that's what my question was. I'm not oh, understanding. Sorry. <laughs> how, do, how do we how do we get our to the customer original to get framed at that point by yeah? <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, how do we get the, the original painting mm -hmm. to you if somebody wants to buy it on your site framed? That's my where I'm confused. So they would be buying it from you. They're not buying it from us. Like we're not a marketplace. So how, who frames it? If here, let's rephrase it a little Maybe bit. Maybe I'm confused. <laughs> so, so our, like, if you got a website with us, our website can replace your Shopify site. Okay. Who, who, who would you ship your original to right now? If someone bought one on your Shopify site? Well, if they want, I don't offer framing anymore, but I used to, and almost every single client that wanted a painting for the price I sell, almost always 99.9% .9 of them wanted them framed. And I had a framer that I used to work with and I used to ship everything myself framed. So um, but, but I stopped doing that because it was so much hassle. And so I shipped it to the client, the original painting directly. You, shop. You, yeah. you would ship it to the customer. With a frame. If you want to offer frames. That's, I'm still confused. You see what I'm saying? Does anybody understand what my question, my question at all here? Like who would, gets the frame? Who no has to go buy the what, frame? No matter what, if you want to sell it framed or unframed, you ship it to the customer. And you if you want to offer it. frames, you would want to just find a local framer to do it for you. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I thought you guys had standard frames that you, you somehow- For the prints. For the prints. For prints. Yes. Okay. That's my, okay. There's a differentiation for prints. Okay. There you go. Got it. Yeah. It'd be super inefficient to ship all that stuff around. Yeah, it's, absolutely. That's why I was asking. And that's why a lot of people don't offer frames. I, I find it fascinating that you had a lot of collectors that wanted frames, um, like turnkey. Yeah. Like, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Because they didn't, because they want everything done for them. Like, you know, when you're paying a, a good chunk of money, like, I don't want to have to have it rolled, come here and not hung. I want to have everything done. And that's how they were, how they do it. That's how they were acting. Like, I want to have everything ready to hang. They want and, it. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. So. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's, that's super fascinating. Yeah. Buyer, buyer behavior, all, all these things. I, I, I love it. So good, good questions. Good questions. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, cool. And it uh, looks like, uh, I know, I thought two people had their hand raised, but Linda, let's see. Yeah, I just had storefront call me, and he <laughs> was just saying you're doing a good job, but you know you, you're just trying to explain it, but not really, you know, showing and like her questions and my questions, some other people's questions, and a more specific, especially if you have originals and stuff. So he said there, and you just made a mistake actually, because you said a thousand dollars per month. That didn't make sense for the website. Oh, so I just tried to that. Yeah. This is a one-time membership and then 44 a month. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? But so he said that what he's doing, I don't know if he's just calling people right now or whatever, unless you bring in this up or not, that 
to go more into detail, like what you're doing, if you want to do more originals or you want to do a little bit of both or what is more catered to you and the prices and how to do it and more to see everything, which he was just talking about the other girl is that um, like he just set up an appointment with me tomorrow and a other handful of people. And if you're interested or not at 1130 tomorrow, my central time here in Massachusetts, I don't know where you live, but and then he would just go more into detail of the pricing and what you really want and things like that. You know what I mean? Because what you're talking about is kind of, con I, you're doing a good job. It's kind of confusing. Like she was just saying, like, you know, like, okay, you'll make the prints, you'll send out the prints, but you're not going to frame them and do all that kind of stuff. So, and you just showed that thing online, but I didn't understand either. Okay. You want it in this color and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And then how does it actually go out? So you're actually, so we're paying you guys to make the prints to sell, send them out to other people. But like I said to the guy on the phone, but if I want to do original and I put glass on it and resin it, it's more original. You can't do that unless I just take a picture before it's resin and put glass on it and then make a print. So maybe you could do both. Okay, you want it, you want it as a print without glass. Or do you want the original done with the glass? You know what I mean? So kind of cater more to people what they're doing for art. I'm going to stop there. I don't know. So I don't understand this. So like what you're talking about, is he going to call us all and make appointments to do more personalized things or just smaller groups or help yeah. me? I mean, today, I, today was really, a you know, I didn't want to, I, I wasn't going into what we do too much. I was trying to stay yeah. just kind of level with it. Um, you know, just because we want to hear about you and, and your art. Um, a lot of times when my team will walk you through a presentation, they're going to get more into like our features and like really what we're providing. Um, I didn't really want to go too deep on that. I'm happy to answer specific questions, but um but yeah, they'll, they'll get you more details. They'll go through the front of a store and explain all the different features because we have hundreds of features. Um, the back end, you know, you can see where you upload images a little more. Um, I know I jumped back there just to show Lily how you can like really just set it simple to toggle off things. So that way, you know, like it's easy that you have full control of your art, whether mm -hmm. you're selling originals or you want to sell prints or only originals or you only offer prints or, you know, it, it's your art store. You get out, you get it out there however you want. You know, art store for instance, is really designed to help you fix the sales problems that a lot of artists have and the marketing issues, right? Um, and just run really big thing. And yeah, if you want to offer prints, we make that easy too. We'll just have a company print frame and ship it. It's all integrated and automated. Um, like, so is like, that thousand dollars? Oh, I lost her. Did did she hit mute? What happened? I don't know. I lost her too. Uh, yeah. Maybe she'll rejoin here in a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just in space. That was weird. All right. Andrew, did you want to say hey? I know you had some questions. Here, I'm going to hit on mute just in case. Because he was asking, do, 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 do we drop ship, ship prints? So, um, can you hear me? Yeah, how are you doing, man? Aloha. I, uh, I'm out of Flagstaff, Arizona. And what it is, is I, I, have, a, I have a friend, and I've known her for years, and and I've worked with trying to help her market her stuff. And um, I, I think this is, uh, this, I'm, I'm, I've been working towards trying to help, you know, with sales and everything. And she's actually a very shy person, but I think, I, I, I think what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to have to pull her ear and say, hey, you don't have any choice, but you have to get in front of the camera. That's what's going to have to happen because there's no way that we're going to be able to sell this stuff uh, online unless she does and 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 like that guy said otherwise she'll 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 have to get out and and and, and um get in front of people and and go to art sales and art art um you know those those things they have i, I can't remember what, what anyhow um so my my understanding is that you for a thousand dollars uh um one one time fee 
you guys provide a number of services. Is that, and, and, that, and that's what I hear you saying uh, for marketing. Is that correct? <clears throat> yeah. So it's, we have a one-time activation. Uh, it's activation. 1000 uh, It does range up on the higher end to uh, $2,700, basically. And then the monthly is 44 a month on the $1,000 level and then $59 a month on the higher level. Um, and the difference is features, which you know, my team can always take anybody through a full like walkthrough and explain the different features and you know what they do. And then you guys can decide whatever's best for you and, and where you're at to where, where's best to start. Um, as a promotion, I just saw this pop in from Melissa that actually in, it right now will actually set the site up for you too and like add your art and everything to it. So that would be included in those prices. So it's, it's a good deal. You can't find anybody to put a Shopify site together for you for probably even 1500 to 2k anyways, just to do that. No, no, I hear, I hear um, what you're saying. Go ahead. It's a good deal. It makes sense for you. Definitely research it. Um, but yeah, it, it's a website that's designed like what you're getting is a store that's designed for selling art. And so like print on demand is included on like any of our levels where we can have a company print frame and ship anything that comes through the store for prints, right? If they come by, um, you'll get an email, you know, you had a sale, but the printer's going to get a notification and they're just going to print frame and ship it automatically. You don't have to do anything. Um, so there's just lots of features and things like that. But also once you have a website, that's not enough, you know, history of us a tiny bit. Like when we first started, um, we were a website company, you know, here's your website. And we had artists coming on board, this fantastic website with wall preview tools and all these features. And like, they still weren't all selling. Like we were running into like, we're like, Hey, this guy over here is doing really well. Like, where, where are you guys struggling? And they were like, well, I don't know how to get people to this website. Right. So having a store is half the battle, right? Now you've exactly. got in there. And so what you do, figure out marketing, right? Um, you could do a bunch of research and figure it out yourself um, or um, hire a mar marketing company. Yeah, uh, That's all expensive. Um, starts to add up fast. But what we do is we have a unique solution, right? We have so many artists and, and photographers as clients over 7,000. So we're able to see what's working, right? And we only work with people selling fine art. So we can see what's working. These are the things that work for selling fine art. And we can just tell you guys what that is. And we can say, hey, to get more exposure, you know, to get the most eyeballs, these are the things to do, right? And these are great times of year. Like I said, the holiday season is coming with your Christmas, your Black Friday, Cyber Monday. It's the biggest art selling time of the year is literally less than 60 days away. It's probably like 45 days away at this exactly. point. Exactly. So we'll tell you exactly what to do. So we have a calendar. It's got something you could do every day. Not everybody has time for that. We do have full-time artists that do a lot more. Um, but yeah, do what you can. And, you know, I definitely encourage you to try and carve out some time come like Black Fridays and all those times and any of those types of promotions when they're happening. They're generally highlighted on our calendar, but it'll say, hey, here's how to do this. Like, here's what your social media post should be. Um, we want to help you grow an email list. I, I talked about that a lot earlier of like knowing your buyers. That's a big part of this. We want to make sure you get all the data for anyone interested in your art. And then here's the email. Like we already wrote the copy and you can plug your name and add your art and okay. pricing to it and send it out. So instead of you guys sitting down at the end of the day and having to do all that from scratch, right. It's, it's, it's a form of the easy button. I, you know, we're not sending it for you, but it saves you a ton of time and a lot of like cognitive load. A lot of our clients um, maybe work another job, you know, and you come home and, and you're trying to do this. Exactly. Like, exactly. I don't want to and, yeah, write an email. And I, I, I know that she, she's ready to retire from her, from her other job. Uh, she's a, actually, she's a hairstylist. She's a beautician. And, um, and I, 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 you know, I, I, she's stubborn. She's old school. And I, I've, I've, I've already told her she, she should have already retired, but you know, what, what can you do with a mule? Right. But that, or, or don't, you know, but that's besides the point. So, 
but no, I, I hear what you're saying, and you're right. You're right. You all the stuff that you're you're talking about, it, it, it takes uh, takes a, a lot of time, and uh, not to mention you have to you have to take time to learn all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time. So uh, and I, I've been I've been working with on, on entrepreneurship for online entrepreneurship for for several years, and I still haven't figured it out. But uh, and but I I've, I've been connected to you guys. I've I've been watching you guys for a very long time, and this is the first time I've I've, I've been invited to one of your webinars. But um, um, now is is this webinar going to be uh, somewhere where we can we can uh, re re uh, look at this thing? I I, I'm, I noticed that you're recording this. Can I show this video to her so that she can see it for herself? I I, I think that's what probably is what's going to take for her to get out of her stubbornness so that she can see that she has a, a, a level of, now that that reminds me you've answered most of all my questions what what kind of success rate do you guys you, you guys have over 7000 clients what kind of success rate do you have of people selling uh, a typical amount of stuff every month yeah i mean everyone's result varies i mean one one really important stat is what after 12 to 18 months we have like a 95% renewal. So generally people who are here, they stay, you know, this is a long time solution for, for so your you own. have good retention and that's good. Um, I know you're, uh, so of course the, 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 the people that sell the least, they're gonna, not going to be selling anything per month, but like what, what's, what's kind of uh, your, your best sellers, your best uh, batters, uh, what, what are they selling? What kind of, how much do you think they're making or whatever? Yeah, let me let me give you kind of a range just to okay. Yeah, because you know it's if I just harp about the top top tier, you know, everybody in the room is like that. That's not always me, right? So I want to like make sure you guys know. I mean, we 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 do have full time artists that do, you know, hundred k plus through their sites annually. Um, we also have people who do you know fifty to fifty to one hundred k annually. We also have some people who do, you know, maybe they build it up to just twelve to fifteen something like that. And this is just extra side money or travel money, or we, you know, photographers just, they just do a little bit and it pays for the hobby. So not everybody's looking to take over the world. Everybody kind of has their own journey of where they want to yeah. be. And so really we know our marketing plan works, right? We've, I've seen it a million times, like it works, but you know, if you join the gym and then just don't work out at all, like that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. So, so it is, it, what I generally say is like, come on, do the marketing you're able to do and uh, try and do it consistent, right? If you can only do a couple hours a week of marketing, you know, not, not everybody can do five hours or more, right? And, right. Most, uh, and this is a good thing for you. It wasn't on the stats I showed earlier, but I think most of our clients generally do one to five hours worth of marketing a week. Exactly. Okay. Um, Another huge group does like five to 10 hours and it's a pretty small group that goes like 10 and above 10 to 20. So not a lot of people do that much. Sometimes when you're first starting, there's not even that many activities for you to do. You know, when you cut out doing all the research and trying to figure out where to go with your time and you just focus, like we're able to point you in the right direction, you save time. Um, but if you're marketing and you're getting the results you want and the growth you're looking for, and you're happy. If you're happy, we're happy. You know, we, we have some artists that do, I would say in the, I, I specifically think of one person who does the 50 to 75 K range. He could easily be well beyond that, but he's like, I'm good. I don't, I don't want to do any more marketing. I'm like happy with the living I'm making. Okay. You're good. We're good. Um, good. And so, and that's why I say some people are happy in, in, in different ranges. And, but if you're not, you just need more exposure, right? That's like, exactly. Lily, Lily yeah. sells. Like, like she, I was like, man, she sells. If she wants to sell more, it's purely a marketing problem, right? And getting yeah, no, I exactly, and that, and, and that's what I, I keep trying to tell her, but she's so freaking stubborn. But that's besides the point. But um, so um, now when you're saying marketing, are you they just doing? And, and what what I, what I hear you saying, and it's true, I. I've run across this uh, at other places. Um, you're saying their email marketing is that what is that what you're saying? They're they're doing 
that where they're spending some of their time or are they doing other stuff too as well? Uh, yeah, email marketing is like one channel. Um, I kind of said, I'm, I might've left email out when I was talking about like Facebook, Instagram, email. Uh, they're all just different channels of ways okay. to get in front of people. Um, so email marketing is a great one. Um, Facebook, Instagram right now are the better socials to spend your time in. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you another reason email is important that a lot of people won't tell you about. Um, email is important because what, what's, what's the true thing? Like when Instagram became popular, a lot of people made Instagram accounts, right? Is your right. Instagram account always identical to your Facebook? Not necessarily. You have like a handle, right? And if people do weird things, maybe what you were using on Facebook or something was taken. So that's different, right? Now, let's say like another platform comes into play, which will happen, right? It's just a matter of, um, I think Melissa already had to jump, but she said, do you see strategies shifting across the years? Yeah. Strategies, they shift across the month, right? Like we make our marketing plan monthly because you know we don't know what december is going to look like things change and right. things stop working that kind of thing but you know when a new platform comes into play people are going to have like you know I'll be joseph 87 or whatever number i can get on this new platform <laughs> but you know what didn't change the email I end up with yep that's right that's what i was just going to say your you go. your warmest market and for over the years, it's, it's always been true. Your warmest market is your email market. Mm -hmm. the, those are the people that you, that, that you personalize with. You. Exactly. And then your and social media, I got to say this, social media is not the best market at all. Um, no, no offense, nothing personal. But uh, something like you may, <laughs> may make a difference. I, I can't tell. I don't know. I, I haven't used well, you yet. Well, that's the thing, like, you know, we don't talk about like Google ads and there, there's a lot of other things online. Yeah, right? exactly. But, but, you know, if you were a lawyer or if you were a plumber, you know, we'd have a totally different conversation because someone who the pipes busted, they're Googling, right? Oh my God. Right. You don't have a lot of emergency art purchases. <clears throat> right? So it's more like you start getting yourself in front of these people and emails and then when that wall space opens up, that's why we talk about romance marketing. You want to tell people about your art, what the pieces mean. Maybe this is what this series is and you're releasing pieces gradually. Like they're following you. Um, you're not being intrusive with your content because people want, like, I think about music as just like paintings. Like anytime an artist that I love comes out with a new album, I want to know about it because I want to like see what it is. I want to listen to it and I might buy yeah. stuff. It's the same thing with what you guys are doing. It's all art. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's important. Like you're not being annoying, post <clears throat> send emails. But yeah, even if people aren't opening all your emails all the time, having those emails in that list is so important for you. Oh, guys. I know. I know. It as much as we can, <clears throat> build those lists. Like it'll help you in the long run. The sooner you start doing that, the better. And that's why a lot of those marketplaces aren't always the best, best thing for you guys. So no, no, I, I, I used to be a radio show host and I had over 8,000 people listening to my shows and a lot of uh, all of that mostly was from the email marketing program. So now one of the things I'm looking at, do you know if anybody's doing Twitch or live, uh, you know, live, um, uh, art, art, art stuff where, where they're painting their, their, their stuff. Um, on Twitch or, or YouTube, uh, do you know anybody that's marketing in that way or, or, or you haven't heard of that yet? Um, you know, I think I did hear about somebody testing that and I'm trying to remember what their results were. Um, but I think once, if, if we see it really start to work, then it starts to show up in our plan. Uh, when those exactly. We do have people like test that stuff. Um, and then once we see it like, be a proven way, then we'll kind of release content and put Work it on our it. to show everybody how to do it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Cause yeah, I know that's, that's one of the things I'm going to do. Do you know who a Akian, uh, Akian is? She's a, uh, she painted a really amazing, um, um, Oh, your guy, your people are calling me, but you know, um, she, she, uh, she uh, sorry, I had to put him on hold, but, um, 
um, they, they um, she painted a really amazing picture of Jesus. And then she's got all this stuff. Uh, she started painting at the age of eight or something like that, or age of five, and just has some really amazing stuff. But um, anyhow, she she what she does is takes takes every month or whenever she takes one piece and, and paints it and puts it on YouTube, and then she like edits everything out, and then and it becomes like like a thirty minute spot or whatever, and then she she shows how she painted it art. A, an art piece and then she she blasted it out to everybody it's available for sale now so but now one of the things before i forget uh one of the things in that one and i heard i heard what you're saying she that woman's leaving money on the table because and this is what i i told my 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 friend is that you know if you sell if you sell uh, enough uh enough prints then that will actually increase the value of your original painting so I, I don't know why she wouldn't want to do that. that that's kind of silly. But anyhow, uh, now do, with that in mind, do you guys number your prints like the, uh, you only sell a limited edition of 100 or 500 of these prints and that's it type of thing? Do you guys do, do something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's totally up to the artist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. so but limited editions are generally a way to charge a little more. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And creating so. like a, a rarity and a scarcity around it. Um, so there are, there are some um, good things that happen with limited editions. Um, generally though, yeah, it's just up to you guys. Um, and so uh, it depends on your price points and, and what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, limited editions are awesome. Um, open edition is a little more just like a higher volume thing. Um, I like what you said. You're totally right. There's a lot of um, sometimes our artists are hesitant to offer prints and it's like, they think it's going to hurt the value and it's the opposite, right? If you sold exactly. a million prints of a, of a piece of art, what do you think the original's worth, right? It's like oh, yeah. more than, um, and, and it's all about, you know, getting your art out there, building your, your name and, and your credibility and, you know, you're recognizable. People know you're not just some guy in your garage or, or gal or, or, or person in the, in the garage painting, like the more you're known, the more that stuff builds out there, um, the better spot you're going to be in. And that's the ticket to gradually. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Aki Ann, she's selling her stuff. At least the originals are a minimum of $100,000. I'm sure of it. But some of them are going for $500,000, a million dollars, and people are buying them. So, that you know, there's a lot of potential out there. And I don't think she's doing live shows. I think most of it or a lot of it is is she's just doing it online and and she's making her money that way and so uh and that's what is convincing me that that it may be uh, working with you guys would be a good idea so, and you're right you know and what uh, if, if you're you can be out marketing and selling originals for a hundred thousand dollars that would be a lot lot more worth your time our time uh to to be marketing in in that way versus you guys and letting you guys sell the the all the the petty stuff you know twenty twenty five hundred dollars for this or whatever you know that that would be a lot more better use of our time and 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 letting, letting you guys um uh print, sell the prints rather than the the original so now what I hear you saying is that you're you, you guys are drop shipping the prints and then and then if the people want to buy the originals then from uh, from us then then we have to uh, uh, ship the the original ourselves. Is that what I hear you saying? Correct, correct. Because that'll always be in, in your possession. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. And, and that's what I was thinking. Because uh, the ototherwise, um, um, I, I, and what I already know is going to have to happen is I'm going to have to have all her good stuff uh, professionally photographed. And But you also offer a, a, a lesson plans on photographing your stuff. Uh, and I, I am a photographer, and I could do that, but do I want to waste my time in that way? I don't know, but that's like the question. So it's like that. Um, so um, there was other one other question. I don't know how to do that, so you know. Oh, uh, oh Mark, huh? There's an article on our blog on how to take those photographs and give you some pointers and lighting suggestions and stuff like that. Yeah, I was looking at it. And plus, I, the, the guy that, that professionally photographed, because I'm an, also an author. I've written two books. And my last, my last book, um, I had my friend paint it i had her paint paint the the 
the the cover uh, cover uh, for my book. I had her paint it, and then I took it and had it professionally photographed. And I watched him for, uh, photograph, and I, I think it'd be pretty easy. It'd just be a matter of getting the equipment. That's all. But that's besides the point. But um, now, in terms of the only other thing I want to know about is marketing. Do you, you know, uh, and also the difference between the thousand uh, dollar um, activation fee versus the twenty seven hundred dollar activation fee. What what's the difference? So in terms of marketing. Uh, and is that is that part of the what what's going on uh, with the twenty seven hundred dollar activation fee? You're uh, you we're getting more marketing uh, by you guys done. Is that what I hear you saying as well? Is that what's going on? Or uh, no, the the difference is more like a different way to look at it is we only really have one plan. It is the higher end plan, um, and it's, it has all the features, right? So our, our marketing plan and our our that kind of content. Um, that's on any level. Um, the upper end has like all the fancy, like fancy bells and whistles, like augmented reality. So they can like use their phone to see it on the wall. Like the, the really fancy stuff is going to be up there. Um, we just know that's not in everybody's budget. And so it's, it's a way to finance it that you could start as low as a thousand and the 44. So less features on the site, so to speak, um, to start with, and then you can always jump up. Um, okay. And then as far as like the marketing goes though, like it's critical, right? You, you can think of the thousand dollar plan almost like as essentials. It's like the things you need, like print on demands even there. Um, that's why I said you get a lot. Um, and you know, when you put a demo request in our, my team will reach out. I know they've been calling a lot of you guys as we've been oh, talking. Yeah, exactly right. And, uh, um, but and Andrew, I, I encourage you to have the artist sit in as well. That way they can see it. Um, Cause you know, you, visuals help with a lot of this stuff. I know yeah, exactly. There, uh, there are some people got confused with my answers and I was like, I probably should have turned on my, the site a little more and, and use some visuals. It would have helped. Um, but yeah, just the marketing plan, you know, a lot of the print on demand, like that stuff's essential. Like if you don't have that, you're, you're almost dead in the water, right? You can have a website with us or anybody in the world, build your own. If nobody's going to see it, it's not going to do you any good. You're not going to sell any art. And so having that plan, knowing where to focus and, and having the things kind of pre-written for you, it, that's on any level. Um, and that's why it's a huge value. If you can start at any level, I encourage you to do it. Um, and obviously research it and my team will show you more details um, before that. But, but yeah, it's awesome. And, and uh, we're just really excited about it. And it's an exciting time of year. Um, the holiday season, it just watching the sales explode every year. I mean, I've been doing it for six of them and it never, never gets old. It's just awesome to see you guys win and see the art get on the walls. And that's what it's all about. That's, that's exactly, what we're doing. exactly. Now, now, again, for the marketing, are you doing a lot of marketing for the, for that price or, or, or just some, uh, just, or, I mean, I'm assuming you're doing at least some. But so, um, we, curious in, in terms of, of what you're doing, I guess. It's more like we we prepped all the meals for you, um, like having a chef cut up all the ingredients and we give them all to you and then you just got to cook it. Um, it's a, I don't know if that's a good comparison for you or analogy. Um, but yeah, we, we've, we've done all the research. Um, we know exactly what you should do and we tell you what to do basically in the calendar um, on any level. We do have services um that we offer like if you aren't able to do the work um you know a lot of people are busy during the holiday season as well and they maybe just want us to do some of the marketing for them we do have options for that kind of stuff okay uh, and some different packages there um if, if those things are in your budget um if not, we'll show you how to do it yourself and save some money um yeah we have a lot of people offload services to us as well like have us do the posting on your social medias and stuff like that. So we, we do have plans and options for those services separate. Um, if you want to add those things when you get started. And that's why I say someone on my team, they'll walk you through, show you everything we do with more detail and then, you know, explain those options. If that's something you're interested in let them know for sure they'll, they'll help you out and see what, you know, it's not always yeah. one size fits all, you know, everybody's in different places and needs different things. And that's, why we have options for you guys. I hear you. Now, and, and the, the only other thing is that I, I think I want to ask is 
you all, I, I think I heard you say earlier that you also provide content for your emails or your your email letters or whatever. Yeah. You, you also provide mm -hmm. those. And, and like you send something once a week or once a month. Uh, is that what we're talking about for emails? I mean, we, we have a whole like, we, yeah, there's like a whole like if, if, if emailing is part of like a like a promotion, right? Well, here's the email you send on this day. Here's the email you send on this day. Here's the like if they're, exactly. all, they're already written. Um, what are those things called? Was it Mad Libs where it's like you just fill in the blanks? Kind of thing. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, yeah, you just, I like that. You, yeah, you substitute. Uh, the, it, it's all. Uh, I and I, I don't know. Are there particular email companies that we're talking about using for this, or you are you have your own email thing? We, we generally recommend or, Mailchimp for that. Mm -hmm. Mailchimp. Okay, got it. And we right. with them, which is fancy fancy talk for if somebody puts their email in the website, um, like our our site. It's going to take it automatically, add it to Mailchimp for you, so you guys don't have to manually do that work. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice and nice and nice and simple for you. So, so that's good. One less thing to do. Uh, no, I hear. It. I'm, and that's what I'm saying. There's, there's so much to mm -hmm. all this, and, and I think people don't really realize that or understand that. And mm -hmm. I, I, I have. I've done all of it, and it's a pain in the ass to do it all. I can tell you that right now. That's just nice point. I love All it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. What was your name again? It's Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joseph. Hey, I think you, you answered all, all the questions that I need so I can go talk to my friend. And I I, I think she can make a, a lot of good money if she would just just uh, allow herself to open up to the possibilities and 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 she wouldn't have to do her, her hair. I already know she doesn't have to do her, her beautician job anymore, but she, she just... Uh, burn, but that's just you know. you know, encourage her to just kind of get the ball rolling on it and and she can slowly kind of transition we, we have a lot of people who do that right you you don't quit your day job on day one ideally you want to build it up and then let it make sense to kind of shift over and that just takes time and then the no, you, you know what you know what i i think she could get, quit her job yesterday and i can i think if she did this program with you guys I think I think she would be fine, and she'd make enough money, substantial income, so that she wouldn't have to worry about or think about that anymore. I think she would be be just fine. But anyhow, that's I, my my opinion. I love the the aggressiveness. There you go. I love right? it, well, Andrew. I, I love the insights and the perspective. Thank you, sir. And I think I think I think I want to try the Twitch thing and the the live Twitch thing and do some art art shows with her painting. And, and that's that, that's the problem. She doesn't want to get in front of an audience. She doesn't want to get in front of a camera. Uh, and 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 until she does, it, it's going to be hard for me to market her, help her market. But that's that's. Fine. Yeah, it'd be a little slower potentially. You know, the one thing <clears throat> on this um, again, I, I don't remember results of like hearing. I, I know some people dabbled in the Twitch thing a little bit. I I, I can't remember off the top of my head how that went. Um, the one thing I would say is like, you do want to think about like where you're at and the audience, right? Like if you are, and this is good for everybody to, to remember and think about, like if you're, um, marketing, I don't know, something in at golf courses and it doesn't make sense for the audience that's there, right. You'd want to like photographs of like golf, like holes are, are like ideal for that. Cause that's, that's yeah. the, clients, that's the audience there. So I just, don't want you to do something on Twitch and then be discouraged with her art business if the audience isn't the right audience there. Exactly. Not... No, no, no. I've already you seen it. I, I've, see I've seen this this young woman. She was painting some stuff and she has a following of over 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with 10,000 people, you could comfortably make a living. I, I mean, even a thousand probably, you can make a, a comfortable living with this stuff. But $10,000... I mean, 10,000 followers, and I'm, all, I'm almost 100% sure she could have a comfortable living for the rest of her life. I, I, don't, I don't have any doubt about that. So I, I think she can get a lot of following from there, but uh, plugging in uh, and, and coordinating it with, with your stuff would be um, an, another, um, another uh, piece of the pie that, that I think would work as well. So Another piece of the puzzle. That all works together. Well, awesome. 
Well, thank you, sir. And then I want to answer Linda's question um, real fast. Next slide. You're muted. Oop, wrong button. Sorry. Um, want to just talk about Linda's thing real quick with the reels and the Facebook uh, and Instagram. Uh, it's another really, you know, there's different tactics to get your art in there. You know, there's a lot of people who say like, how do I get my art beyond my followers that I have right now? Right. And clearly organic posting and people can share and like, you know, they share with someone, they follow you. There's growth there. Um, but Reels is like a really nice opportunity right now. It's why we have like playbooks and, and, and things to tell you exactly how to do it. Um, once you remember here, because it's a unique opportunity and that you're able to cut through and get more exposure with those things um, beyond like your initial following. So it's, it's kind of a, a rare opportunity. And that's why we're really pushing. Like if you're able to do that stuff, do it. Um, Cause you could see a, a nice shot to your, your following there. And again, there's different tactics that come and, and appear through time. Again, these things shift. They're not always stagnant. Um, you've got to adjust. And that's why we have a marketing plan that says, Oh, wait, this is something that works. Everybody do this. Let's go like um, take advantage of it while it's there. Um, so right now it's a great opportunity to get more following cut beyond your, your initial group uh, and following that you have and get more exposure. So leverage that, take advantage of it. Obviously, when you remember, we tell you exactly how to do it and all the uh, laid out step by step. But yeah, um, again, there's just these unique times and these opportunities that come in marketing um, in different areas and different platforms. You know, something could surface as far as like email marketing, like, like you always have the edge. Right. And we always want to make sure our artists have the edge above all the other artists because it's easy to think, oh, well, there's so many people painting. There's so many people taking pictures and photography. How do I stick out? And, you know, it's good to always have that edge. And we always want to make sure you guys have it because um, it's all about getting the art out there. So, well, awesome. Well, we ran pretty long. Time flies when you're having fun. I appreciate you guys so much for coming by. Really all your questions. Love it. I don't, I don't know if I missed anybody. I hope I didn't miss anybody. That would make me, make me sad. Um, but yeah, y'all, thank you. Um, again, big holiday season is right around the corner. We call it Q4, which is the fourth quarter when a Black Friday, Cyber Monday, again, a lot of that, those sales start getting pulled out of the market earlier and earlier. So the faster you're able to like get in the game and get more growth. And there's just even if you're not selling out of the gate, there's more people. You think about like Thanksgiving dinner and these times where people are just on their phones. Um, it's a good time to get in front of them and have more visibility on your art. So I definitely encourage you guys, no matter where you're at and your art journey, get in the game if you can. Um, like I said, we have fantastic promotion. You can start as low as the thousand one time and then 44 a month or Start with everything out of the gate. Um, all the features and bells and whistles at the twenty six ninety nine, twenty seven hundred is what I say, and then fifty nine a month. And uh, if you want to get started now, we'll make it real easy for you. We'll set it up and add your art and turn it on for you, and you guys can just focus about getting your art out there and uh, seeing what happens. So, love you guys. Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. And yeah, you guys have a great day and a, and a great week.